This lesson is about developing children's orienteering skills. It's about developing their understanding of map symbols and simple coordinates to find their way around a trail. It's really important because not only does it develop teamwork, cooperation, children are having to think really carefully about how to solve a problem. For this lesson, you need quite a lot of resources, but all of them are really easy to make. Some flashcards with some Ordnance Survey map symbols on them and a way of laying out an orienteering trail around the field. I've used uh, canes with plant pots tied to them. Right, we're going to start today our orienteering. We're going to do some warm-ups where we're going to look at some map symbols and see if you can remember those map symbols that we've been looking at in the classroom. What you need to do is make sure children have had some experience of reading map symbols and recognising them and then you can incorporate that quite easily into a warm-up in a fun and healthy way. You ready for your first symbol? Cancer! Brilliant, well done, okay. Now this is a tricky one, are you ready? Church with a spire, well done, off you go. Now's a good chance to introduce teamwork and also introduce the element of timing. Our next activity is going to be where we start introducing you to visiting control points in a given order. Lots of thinking in this activity. Timing, observing, speed, accuracy, all those things you need to remember. Ready, go. That's it. Well done. Sean, shout out your symbol. Well done, Liam. Oh, we've got a queue at the golf course. Well done. Well done, Harriet. Well done. Then you can move on to the orienteering proper, where children are using a space to follow a trail in a given order. By the end of the course, you should have a collection of 10 map symbols. Children are given a pre-made map of the school grounds. This has got a key on it to show children where buildings are, where open ground is, where they're going to find trees and boundaries. This map has got coordinates on it, so children can use the coordinates to help them find the given control points. You can be really flexible about the maps. You can use a trail inside a building, you can use a trail just on the playground, or whatever space you have available to you. Well, what is it? What is it? Write down. It's an information centre. It's in 4D. Is it 4D? Yeah. 4... For younger children, you could try using much more simple map symbols. For older children, why not get them to plan their own route around the trail? It is the parking. What pleases me the most is I can see children actually using the maps and using the coordinates rather than just spotting the control points with their eyes. At the end of the lesson, you want children to have a collection of map symbols that they found. That's it, let's go. Well done everybody, you completed that course really quickly and we were so impressed by how you found all the symbols and you worked together really, really efficiently. Now I want you to tell me, what have you learnt from today's lesson? Put your hands up for me. Georgia. Teamwork. Teamwork, excellent. Nick. Reading coordinates. Excellent. Jade. To orientate your map. That's a really important skill, what does that mean? Because if you don't orientate it, you may go to the wrong place. Exactly. Well done. And that's a key skill for orienteering. Oh, David. Symbol reading. Good boy. And what symbols have you learned? Caravan site and picnic site. Any other skills that we've found out about today? Adam. Being independent. Independent. And what does that mean, Adam? Where you work without anyone helping you. Well done. You've done brilliantly today. Are you pleased with yourselves? The next step for this lesson would be to introduce children planning their own routes around a trail and eventually you'd want children to begin to use compasses to find directions and help them solve the trail in that way.
The lesson and using the map is a fantastic way of engaging the children with their local environment. What you would need is a map of your local area, or you could even use a map that you had made up yourself. And you could use any images on any topic on the playing cards to help children locate different things on the map. I chose to use lettering. If you're working with less able children, it might be more appropriate to use images. The first thing in the lesson is to refresh the children's understanding of renewable energy sources. Right, we've got three. Can anyone think of any more? Biomass. Biomass energy. Can you explain what biomass energy is? It's where you turn rubbish into electricity. Now, you've got something on your tables that we haven't discussed yet. What is it you've got? Like a diagram map thing. It is a map. And um, what have I given you to help you understand your map? Andy? A key. A key. Thank you. Deep water, the dark blue. Shallow water, is light blue. It would be important to give children time to look at the map, to identify different features, and to see what information the map is actually showing them. It could be, it could be um, China. It's not England. The children didn't know that this was a map of Western and it was only when they started to actually discuss the different features that were shown did they become aware that it was actually an area that they were familiar with. But I think it would be Western. <laughs> it does look like it. We're going to pretend to be planners and we're going to be looking at siting renewable energy projects in different places. What Charlotte's going to do now is she's going to come around and she's going to give you a pack of energy cards. As a group, you can choose which three you would like to use. So which ones? You're going to be placing them on the map. I'd put it on the mountain. Yeah, because if it's over here, not many people will exactly go. Have you ever heard the noise from a wind turbine? And how would you describe it? Not very, very loud. It's not really loud, but it's one of those noises that goes on and on and on. We well, were using the water, so we were running. Yeah. Yeah. Your presentation is going to involve you explaining to the class why it is that you have placed your energy installations where you have. This is our presentation about wind and solar energy. What, what is wind energy? Wind energy is a renewable source of energy. It generates electricity 65% to 80% of the time. The good thing is it, it causes no pollution whatsoever. It's not very visible to the public. After their presentation, the rest of the class would be invited to question the children or to ask the children to justify why they had made their decisions. How would the wind energy be like not sight but being able to see? Because they're quite far away from people and they're behind trees. What you're going to do is include planting of trees to reduce the visibility. I think if the children understand that decisions aren't always clear cut, that Sometimes there are very good reasons why people decide things, but often this is a question of compromise. What have we learnt from this challenge? Andy? You have to think of everybody before you put, like, an energy down or any equipment, really. So the decisions that you've been making today are happening in real life. And who knows, you might be making those decisions for real in a few years' time. I've planned this lesson around a fake scenario involving a place called Triginis. Triginis is a, a farm which the children in year five at a school visit every year. It's a place the children really, really enjoyed when we visited there and they have a really emotional connection to it. The things you need for this lesson are scrap paper, marker pens, digi blues, laptops and a planning sheet. In your groups, I want you just to talk about... When the children come into the lesson and hand out an email and ask them to read it in pairs. Well, unfortunately. The purpose of the email is to set up a fake scenario where the place that the children love is under threat from a development. The farm to be knocked down to make a way for a huge power station. The email really needs to say what is happening to the place the children love and also give them an opportunity so that they can respond. 
Well, I thought we, uh, we were kind of um, shocked because we've been there and we really enjoyed it. From the email, the best thing to do is a video of us telling the county council why it would be a bad idea. In your groups, can you discuss what you think the environmental impacts of the power station will be? And there'll be a lot of pollution. I do this so we can move on to a, a brainstorming activity. So what arguments are we going to have together? We felt like a family and then no one will have the chance to, if they build it, no one will have the chance to feel that way. I think we really need to get that down. Right then, so what kind of things are we thinking about? What kind of things are we discussing and writing down? Abby? Well, what we were thinking about was all like the local area, the wildlife and the pollution and what it would cause around the area. All the wildlife will be gone and they'll have to move. Yep, the wildlife will lose their homes. After the brainstorm activity, hand out the planning sheet so the children can focus their attention towards the persuasive argument. So in the middle, is our main argument. What do you think the main argument today is? A power station being built at Trigenus. Don't forget to mention to the children all the persuasive devices such as biased, exaggeration, rhetorical questions and those powerful words. Alongside the reasons in other bubbles around it, there are powerful words. Now why do we have to consider powerful words when we are doing persuasive arguments? If we had words just like good or bad, then they wouldn't find them very persuasive. Atrocious. And then we would be basically less. bad. Atrocious. Life, fella. Can anyone tell me another persuasive device? You could use um, rhetorical questions. Yeah, rhetor what do you mean by rhetorical questions, Marion? Well, like questions that people, that people think about. But this is the most important thing you've got to keep in the back of your mind all the way through. You've got to be biased. After they finish those activities, it's time to move on to the main task, which is rehearsing and filming their persuasive argument. To persuade the county council, you must be passionate about what you are saying. You will need someone in your group to be the cameraman, and you also need someone in your group to be in charge of the editing. Off you go. stations was built on Trigenus Farm, then it would, be, it would be disturbing to all the people who live around the spot. With the power station built in place, it would cause pollution, and then there would be acid rain. When acid rain falls, it, it, can, it can make the rocks erode. This can be dangerous for the coastline. In conclusion, we hope Trigenus Farm wouldn't get ruined with a horrific power station. How would, how would you feel if it was your home? Once you feel the children have filmed their video clips, it's a good idea to bring the children onto the carpet. This is a time where you confess that you've told a white lie. Right, I do have a bit of a confession to make, OK? It actually wasn't a real email and Triginus is not going to be knocked down. But I thought if I give you something that you can really get emotionally involved in, then your persuasive writing will be so much better. And just by looking at some of your ideas, I think I was right. You can take this lesson further by taking the children into the computer room and allow the children time to edit their videos and produce one big piece for the whole class. Everyone forgive me.